Ryan Little. <laughs> Morning, y'all. So it's a crazy one. Today is the last day before I'm away for over a week of travels from America to Spain. Very exciting project in Spain. My cup's not clean. I've used the noodles. So yesterday's question was an interesting one. What would you change, not technically, but more kind of like skill-based emotion? Lots of people picking uh, green reading as a skill they would want to be better at. Well, I always think it's interesting with that one, and I agree you could probably get better at green reading as a whole, as amateur golfers, but... Like, how do you know that it is green reading? How do you know you've started it on the right line? If you're that bad at reading the greens, how do you know if you've even started it in the right place? I always think it's an interesting one. Certainly as a coach, one of those interesting questions is always how people come to the conclusions that they come to. Because sometimes you're working with them and sometimes you're working against them, trying to persuade people, look, I know that's what it kind of feels like, but uh, that isn't the answer. That hitting it 300 yards quest that you've been on probably isn't the answer. You know, those kind of persuasions. So today's question, why travels begin? What is the best country in the world you play golf in? So what's one of the most favourite locations for you to go and play golf? Hit that comment section up down below. Hit that thumbs up button as well. I think it's on this side. And the subscribe button. If you don't already subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Videos every day. Just, you know, it's worth it really. Right, today's swing's a fantastic one. Used to do this so much with students. I always think this one's quite interesting. So this player doesn't really have a great awareness of where his club face is as it swings around his body. So what I mean by that is he swings probably with a lot of speed and commitment, um, but he's not afraid to have that speed and that commitment with that club face at this angle. At this stage, you can see it's almost pointing up at the sky. My club face will be pointing almost more down to the ground at this stage. So there's a very good chance his club face is going to be open to a pass, subject to what path he swings on, generally creating push cuts, cuts, just, you know, driver shots, really trying to struggle, like struggle from holding them from going miles off to the right. So we're going to do some great drills around club face awareness. So many golfers have such little awareness of where the face should be at different points in their swing, they can't even imagine it. And that then makes it very hard for them the control, starting point, shape, direction of their golf shots. Right, I have a golf bag, but I don't often have my clubs in it. That is a tailor made, that is a tailor made. I need to make sure my clubs get in here. Which is about finding them from the very disorganized files. That is mine, mine certainly looks like mine. That's my eight eye, that's the front door. That wasn't for me. Six, seven, eight, nine, pitching wedge, three wedges, putter. Jobs are good. Right, second drill, really effective for visualizing face angles, wrist angles. Think about throwing something. If I was gonna throw one of these balls, now where this gets complicated is when I get golfers who play right-handed. So right-handed swingers, but throw left-handed. It's a rare pattern, but when I see that pattern, club face control for those people can be challenging. So if you're one of those, it's a totally different video. Post a comment, let's see how many of you there are. There won't be many, and maybe I'll do something around it another day, but. So I'm left-handed for writing, but I would throw with my right hand. And if just think about, if I was gonna throw this ball kind of like level with the ground. I want you to think about angles your right wrist gets into to make this throw happen. So I'm going to do my backswing. I'm just going to leave my wrist, which sets at this angle, and then I'm going to put myself into kind of backswing golf and let the left wrist join. And what I'm going to notice is it's much more this way. Then, if I was to go last parallel of the throw, so equivalent to golf swing last parallel, if you like, so around here for the throwing action, put the right hand on, take golf posture, and almost get into that kind of pre-impact position. Again, it's pulling my wrist more this way. So that's all well and good, but you've got to do this in relationship to what you are doing to try and work out and feel the contrasting movement. So your wrist angles at the top appear to be more this way. So basically, right hand is here as left hand cups. So that would mean throwing the ball without putting that 
wrist hinge, that wrist angle in on the way back to then on the downswing, let it go. And it's the same as you hit the ball, you're keeping this wrist hinge in there and then you're letting it all go down at the ball. Obviously that happens too quick, but as soon, the more you leave that wrist in there on the way down, so flattening lead wrist, right wrist bending back, the more you often they people do just let it all go down at the bottom. So if I was to do the backswing with your wrist angles, I mean it feels like I'm just gonna kind of hook the ball when I throw it over here with no power. I don't feel like I've got that kind of really snappy wrist action that's gonna throw that ball out like you're skimming it. Like you're at the beach and you're skimming that stone. Give it a few actions that feel what's happening to your wrist. Relate that to your golf action. It will completely change the way you think about wrist actions, club face control during the swing, and it will allow you to get control of it. It will allow you to understand the differences, the nuances of the different wrist actions that control different twists in the face. Definitely will control different flights of your golf ball. Let's answer your questions. Hello. Hello. Uh, I've just won order of merit at my golf club in my first year's golf. Well done. And I've got my handicap down to six. Cool. I'm just using the old JPX now under two up here. Six idiots. <laughs> and I'm wondering on those bad days, should I have something with a little bit more help in lower irons? Like, because I play four to pitching wedge. Um, and, you know, I've been looking at those new AP3s and the AP2, how you can do a combo. Because the JPX 904s don't loft things all different and help a brother out. What we're going to do? What we're going to do, Pops? I don't know. We asked the professional, don't we? Good question. With so much kind of um, combo sets flying around at the minute. Just to say, Orla says hello to Multicolored Bear as well. She thinks she looks cool. I think the biggest difference you would notice if you do opt for the combo set is when loft comes off that club. So if you're playing down at six, you're going to be fine with a seven iron, even a six iron possibly down, you know, to wedges. Loft is going to serve you well enough to get what in the air and all those kind of things. If you think about my set, I've got a five iron and then I go to ultimate game improvement because I go to a hybrid, I go to my 23 degree rinky dinks and then another hybrid above that. So I go blade to then really extreme help as soon as I get to those lower lofted clubs. And it doesn't bother me off a tee, a four iron, I hit as good as anything or as bad as anything. I hit it the same pretty much as my hybrid. It's from the ground, it's from the semi-rough, it's from a downhill lie, it's from a wet downhill lie, you know, kind of all those gaming positions where the hybrid, the game improvement makes a big difference. But I find I have to go all the way to game improvement. I just step up in there kind of combo sets, I find it doesn't really make a big enough noticeable difference for me. Not to say you shouldn't do it. Biggest thing you should do here is go and test. Certainly the new Titleist range is great when it comes to comboing, but Mizuno are making great stuff with it. I mean, all the companies are tailor-made. You just gotta watch the loss, like you're saying, which is about going to get a fit, maybe a bit of a gap testing within that fit with some different lofted irons if you can, to make sure that you do get the correct gapping. Good question. Next year, Category one, five and below. Come on, bruh, you can do it. Right, it's time to go and pick up my car. Car fixed, ready to rumble. Vegas tomorrow, here I come. All right, coach? All right. Oh. <laughs> what are they? They're right fancy, aren't they? <laughs> Lovely color for me, that, isn't it? Eh, every angle? Every angle. Wow. And that one. That angle? And that one. I like that angle. And this one. Oh, that's two lovely angles. Oh. That. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure you can pull them off, bruh. Well, I'll give it a go. <laughs> and then, if, if the comments don't like it, well, they'll hopefully send me another colour. Then you'll wear them even more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, last drill. What I want you to do is keep the face as close to you as possible. So what I mean, if you hold the club this way, opposed to full length, where the club goes a long way away from you, so the head of the club gets way out of your view, it makes it harder for you to imagine and see where it's gone. By holding it this way, to completely split handed, you can take that club back, put twists into the face, you can even do this indoors because you're not going to hit any ceilings and see a bit clearer where the face is. And what I want you to do is make a backswing where you feel like you're turning that face up to the sky and then another one where you're turning the face up to the sky. So around this way, opposed to turning the face up to the sky around that way. So let's call this one 
clockwise, turn it anti clockwise up to the sky for the good shot and then your shot more up to the sky clockwise and then very much get into last parallel feeling like you're turning that face down to the ground you'll be able to see it there so feel it in your hands and then just let that club go beyond you as you let the club go beyond you you can let the right hand come off and come back up to the top as well just to feel that very different use of the face that building up that control that understanding of where it is at different points as it travels around your body it's going to just make a huge difference to your control of your goal shots right see you all tomorrow i'm not sure what vlogs you're going to get over the next few days because travel is drive to here fly over to here fly over to here and then fly into vegas so you could define that as a little crazy and we better get this done for tomorrow morning Oh, let's have one minute extra. Oh, one more minute. Ouch. See you tomorrow.